Check one, two. How's everybody doing? Sorry for the late start. I'm hobbling around here on my leg. That's not doing so hot. So, anyway. I guess we lost some people. I saw it was a little higher. Sorry. <laughs> Hopefully, they catch it later. Um, how's everybody doing? I'm kind of low on here. Ugh. I'm going to try to raise my chair a little bit. Ugh. What is going on, people? Okay, there we go. Uh, okay. Uh, how's everybody doing? Is everyone surviving? Not getting the Rona. <laughs> surviving during this crazy time. <clears throat> Trying to make ends meet. I'm uh, just getting my music set up. Sorry for the late start. Sorry, sorry. Uh, almost there. All right. So I went to the doctor to get my leg checked out. And then I was like, by the way, can I get an antibody test for CV? <clears throat> Excuse me. He was just like, well, we could do it, but... So many false positives. He's like, I'm not sure what the point is of getting it. I don't tell anybody to get it. It's like, really? He's like, yeah. It's like that's weird. Um, like, yeah. I mean, it's like he said it's anywhere between what is it, 20 to 30 percent failure rate at least. It's like it's so many false positives, and it's like even if it is positive, we don't really know. It's like, I don't know. I, it was just blown away. I was just like, dude, I want to have an antibody test. He's like, eh, it's not really worth it. But even so, I wouldn't know how to diagnose it properly because. We don't really know what to look for. I was like, what? So then how can you say that people have cases? And he's like, well, the symptoms, that's how we judge it. I was like, okay, <laughs> okay. So if I have like a flu and a cough, it's definitely not the flu, it's definitely CV-19. It's like, <laughs> it's like, wow, okay. Anyway, so that was my doctor visit. So basically just said, yeah, nothing's torn. You're, you're doing everything right. That'll be about 165. I was like, cool, great, thanks for letting me know, nothing's wrong, but, yeah, that's what I went for, so, anyway, he's like, your self-diagnosis was pretty accurate, you would have made a good doctor, I was like, gee, thanks, <laughs> cool, <laughs> here's 165 bucks for complimenting me, thank you, <laughs> anyway, let's do some sculpting, and, uh, I was thinking about doing something kind of fun today, too, um, <clears throat> like a little, uh, little voting, so to speak. Um, since I'm kind of like on the fence here, I could, I could keep going with Mufasa and kind of try to flesh out the rest of these clouds, but I feel like a lot of people are bored watching the clouds being <clears throat> done, and uh, I don't want to bore anybody. <clears throat> Excuse me, allergies are acting up today. Or do we want me to continue on these guys? Um... And this is the older one, I think. I have the newer one it's somewhere with the clouds already kind of implemented. Um, so, yeah, let me know what you guys think. If you would like to see more of Cupid and Psyche or more of Mufasa today. But I'm going to keep going on the on the shield first. And then get back to whichever you guys and ladies, guys and gals, would like me to uh, continue on. And that reminds me, i got to bring up my... Ah, derp. Sorry, I gotta bring up my reference for the uh, shield here quick. Did I put it on this or is it on my USB drive? Poop. Let's see, I think it's on here. Uh, so, Paul Oakenfold. <laughs> yes, sir. That's what I'm listening to right now, but <clears throat> since he's only got an hour on there, I'll probably be doing something else. Um, maybe like some of the Last Guardian soundtrack. Um. Uh, where am I going here? Just trying to find my stuff quickly. Um. Okay, here we are. <coughs> Pardon me. Got some reference up here. All right, just see here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, 
12. That's like 13. Okay. So like 26 is how many... I'm just counting how many um, <clears throat> grooves there are in the, uh, in the center of the shield. So for those who may not know, or for those who are curious, um, this one shot has a lot of illumination on it, but this is a reference photo I'm looking at right now. It's not the one that's flat against the screen, it's sideways so I can look at some of that detail, but then I found a better one um, that I got from the game as well. So I'm looking right now at like, I gotta create the center pieces here, right? So we got these little details, these little ornate pieces, or you know, carvings in there, and then you got these two little raised tricos that look like they're either eating the same thing or puking <laughs> the same thing, tearing it apart, whichever. So, um, so anyway, that's what I'm, so I'm looking at on my other monitor, and uh, yeah, I don't think I have the other. I thought I had the flat one that was like straight on, but apparently not. I think I can find it in other area here. I really thought I had that on here though, I'm surprised. Hmm. And if you guys hear any loud noises outside, I apologize. Uh, some people across the street are like chopping down trees and uh, just destroying the environment, sadly. <laughs> They're renovating some landscape. They're doing some landscaping and whatever. I don't know. Ripping out trees. Sad. I like the like. I love the shade that they provided, and now they're kind of like just getting ripped out. Sad. Anyway. Uh, good vibes. Throwing darts in the dark. Lol. Twenty twenty. Everyone. Yeah. Aim and attack helicopter. Hello. <laughs> or you an Apache? That's funny. <laughs> but UI colors, dude. How do I change them from orange to default? From the orange default. Okay, I'll show you. Oh, it's insane how many Pixelogic last years have landscaping going on in the background. I never hear it happening. Cool. Good to know. Okay, so um, Croesus. Dova? I hope I'm saying that right. I don't know, I'm probably butchering it. Um, <clears throat> so if you want to change your UI, that's really easy. Let's show you that really quick. Um, so you want to go to Preferences, and then you want to go to Custom... Oh, wait, what is it? Colors? Right, right, right. Oh, what is it now? It's been a long time since I've done this. Here, eye Colors, there we go. So yeah, Preferences, Eye Colors, and then here you go. Here are all your options. So this is my setup. Pretty simple. I like a minty green kind of color. Maybe I should go a little bit more aqua, so it's a little bit more clear that it's mint. Some people are like, oh, it's green! But then again, I learned that uh, as you age, and this also applies if you just have not as great color vision as someone else, um, but as you age, the one co the two colors that people always confuse the most and that they're closest together are green and blue. So as you get older, and if anything's more in the aqua range, aqua green, aqua blue, pure like aqua, you're going to hear people say, oh, that's green, that green thing. And you're like, that's definitely aqua, or that's definitely blue. And then someone else is going to be like, oh, that blue thing. And you're like, this is definitely green, or it's definitely aqua green. So just just so you know, you're going to hear that a lot in life, the older you get. And you'll probably confuse things too yourself, as I'm sure I have. Um, but uh, I had color vision tested, like, I don't know, my first professional art gig job, actually, was this very strict Japanese company. And so I had to really, I had to take these tests where they had all these little... Um, these little wooden like discs all right one side had a color and then the flip side had a number so what they do is they would have these little long boxes like these little rectangular boxes with all these little discs in there and they would you know jumble everything up so you have all these mixture of colors and sometimes they'd be really sneaky and put this the, the color that's like number 15 and number 16 right next to each other but flip it so you'd have to really be clear, like really sharp. And I got 100% on all of them. I was so proud because they go from like green to red. And then they go from like uh, blue to orange. And then I think they had like, uh, I forget what else, maybe purple to green or yellow to red. I don't know. They had, some, you know, like colors that fade into each other. Of course, if you look at the color wheel, you know, it's always like the next, you know, the tangent one, the next one over, the adjacent one, I mean. Um, so, yeah, anyway, just interesting color facts for you. Fun stuff. Okay. Um, oh yeah. Also, one of your eyes sees more red than the other. If you ever, if you ever didn't check that out, it's pretty cool. Um, close one eye and stare at something for a while, and then close the other eye and look at the same thing and notice which one is more red. I think it's usually the right is more red, if I'm not mistaken. 
could be the other way around, I forget, but one of the two. Anyway. Um, <laughs> Pepper Penguin, that's funny. Okay. Um, oh, yeah, so also if you wanted to, if, if for anyone who wondered about the colors too, um, if you want to know how you get these different colors, because you just click on here and it doesn't do anything, right? You just click on it, it's like, what's going on? You, you need to draw from the environment. So that's where this is handy. So your, your color box here, you want to, like here, you want to select whatever color you want. So let's say you want your UI to be red. So you drag it over here and say you pick hot red. So now you got red there. So now you come here. Let's say you want all these buttons that are green to be red. So you hold, drag. So I'm just clicking and dragging and then let go. And now anything that was that color is now red. If you, you've made a mistake, let's say you want it to match some other color, you can drag from here. And if you have that color somewhere else, you go boop, drag it there absorbs that color again. Um, I'm trying to find which one of these buttons has... Because one thing I didn't do properly is like the text here is a little hard to see against that light green. At least on my uh, antique. <clears throat> Pardon me. I just started drinking coffee because I slept in because I was up super late. So I'm burping. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, let me think here which button is like... Anyway, I don't want to take too much time on this, but... Uh, there you go. See, so... Boom. So you can adopt. That's how you easily then can change all your other colors to be that color. You just drag to the next one that's in your palette here then. And makes it super fast and convenient. So there you go. Ah! Okay. Alrighty, so... Ugh, this is such a weird position. I have my right leg like way up here on my desk. And then I'm sort of sitting on this tall chair. But it's super uncomfortable. Ugh. I'm just trying to ice the leg because there's no way to, way to ice it down here. Ugh. But at least I'm able to kind of hobble around still. So, I'm, like someone asked me the other day, they're like, "Are you still act, you still walking around like a zombie?" I'm like, "Yeah." I was like, "Wait, what do you mean by a zombie?" And they're like, "You're a live stream. I saw you like you were saying, oh yeah." I completely forgot. I'm like, "Yeah, I'm shambling down the road like The Walking Dead." <laughs> uh, anyway. Um. <laughs> I have a custom UI as a departure point. See which guy says free custom UIs. Yeah, there's that too. You can always download some custom UIs. No, it's actually not. A, it's not a Skyrim shield. <clears throat> it's a um, it's a mirror shield. So it's, uh, it's based on the Last Guardian's uh, mirror shield, which is this guy. This is from the end of the game, actually, after the credits. It has this beautiful ending where it circles back around to the very beginning. So as they zoom in on the shield, it fades from seeing a clean, pure shield in the exact same position, and then they do a great dissolve, where then you have the dirt covering it, where the game opens up. So the, the game, when you start it up, it has just the shield in dirt. So all you see is, like, um, like this much. So like all of this side on the left here is covered in dirt, and all you have is like this amount of this like little edge here, like one one third of the whole thing showing in grass covered dirt. So it's been there for a while, and uh, <clears throat> so this fades into the beginning, and it kind of has this beautiful circle around to the to the beginning of the whole story of how it opens up and why. Um, but in the very beginning, they just zoom in on the shield, or they open on the shield, and then you have a shadow of a child. You hear kids running around laughing, playing, and then one of them. You hear stops and kind of you hear just like the feet and grass kind of walking toward you. You see the shadow fall over this object, and you see it kind of fo fixate on it for a second, and then they cut to the title, and then all these beautiful illustrations of other creatures, mythical and real, from a bestiary that's a famous um, book of uh, beasts that was written like I think drawn and illustrated like way back, like way back, like 16th century I think or something like that, really old, maybe 18th century. <clears throat> I actually found it on Amazon and got some of them. It's pretty cool. Uh, it's like a collection of them. Um, anyway, um, so yeah, so it's a really cool opening. It's very interesting. It's intriguing. And then it opens up with a child waking up next to Torrico or Trico. And, uh, and that's where the story takes off. And the boy is narrating this as an adult. So then near the end of the game, you find out, you get to see the boy as an adult. And it's pretty cool. He's telling it to children. He's telling the story of what all happened to the kids. Because the kids found this shield, which is like this thing you find at the very beginning of the game anyway. And it's a huge primary element in the game. So, it's pretty. It's a pretty smart story. I gotta say, I really, I really uh, respect you, to son, for his um, his ideas, his vision. It's a very, it's a very cohesive, intelligently written 
emotional story. All right, so these grooves are just like, we've got a slice and then we got a, a curve around. So what I'm gonna try to do is I think radial, <coughs> radial symmetry here, that'll help me do this all at once in the same, uh, very cleanly. So this is kind of like a very ornate um, oriental kind of look to it. And it's, I mean, like it's a classic, when I see these these markings, especially, it's it's like a, a line with it with an insert, like this, basically in the center that's around the ring. I think of um, some. I, my parents and I always used to eat some amazing Chinese food at this wonderful Chinese restaurant that is still around. And uh, we go whenever I'm back home. We always go there, and, and the, the owners know us because I was we came there since I was little. And the plates had this exact same design, except I think a little bit more um, wide. But it's almost it's identical, and I keep wondering like if this means anything. I don't know. Maybe not. It might just be an, an ornate, a nice ornate design that they like. Um, I mean, whoever designed the plates, you know. But it seems like a traditional. It seems like a very traditional Oriental kind of um, inscription or design that, that I see a lot in different um, different impl uh, different implement implementations, different places. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, all right, so what are we doing here? We're gonna do slash three brush. I'm gonna bring this down to make maybe, and yeah, maybe like 45, 46. Trying to get same depth. Eh, it's a little too strong, so yeah, maybe like 43. 41. Eh, yeah, I wanna go. The other thing, I'm thinking about 3D printing this. I mean, I'm planning on it. Oh yeah, if someone, I don't know, there's a gentleman who emailed me from uh, Germany, I believe. Forgive me if it's the wrong country. I got his email, I have to reply to him, but he was telling me that he has some great pointers on using uh, Adafruit and an uh, Arduino to do the electronics for this thing, which is awesome. Thank you so much for reaching out if you see this, sir, and I will get back to you here. I just reminded myself I need to reply to that email. Um, so anyway, I'm saying that because I'm planning to 3D print this as well as use this in my short and meaning that you want to sometimes make your details a little bit deeper, a little bit stronger, um, because when you 3D print something, depending on what kind of printer you're using, you can kind of have some of the smaller details kind of wash out a little bit or um, depending if some resin might actually accidentally cure in some of the crevasses, some of your little creases and areas. Um, that can sort of dull down, even if it doesn't, when you spray paint it or you paint it in any way, that's adding an extra layer. And if you have really fine details, paint will just sort of muddy it or just sort of smooth it over, essentially. So if you go in a little harder and deeper with your, uh, with your details, you will get um, better results when you paint it or when you print, depending on what your, your final result is. So I'm just trying to find that happy medium, because I'll probably have this, um, I'll probably do just like a nice wash or two on this just to kind of get in the creases so it kind of really adds some contrast um, and I might have to dye or paint this as well depending on how I end up printing it but I think um, I might have to edit some of the the uh, resin too I might have to actually dye the resin <coughs> oh nope no corgi I have a corgi for those who may not know he loves to bark um, Okay, sorry. What is the chat saying? Um, <laughs> after a decade of development, it better be a good story. That's funny. I think he wrote it very in a very short amount of time, um, and then maybe just developed little tweaked little things here and there. Um, I'm pretty sure it was done way way before the game was done. I mean, I'm 99% sure because there's so many crucial elements that they showed even in like the first and second teaser trailers that were intact all the way in the end. And some of the notes, I think of the, the dates and notes on his um, <clears throat> um, concept artwork is also like dated way back. And then you see the original trailer and you see the final game and there's a lot that is like identical, just maybe like updated graphics or like refined modeling um, and texturing, but it's the identical story elements from, the, from way back when. So I'm pretty sure he finished it, you know, story-wise, that was done a long time ago. It was just they had to break production for a while um, from when they started to then when it transitioned to PS4. A lot of people thought it wasn't ever going to happen. Um, so it's uh, it's amazing it did. It really is because the story is great. I think it's, it's really wonderful. Um, what is the art book you're talking about? I always need some, some more art books. Oh, um, art book. Did I mention an art book? Um, I mean, I'm using The Last Guardian uh, art book as some reference for this and other stuff I'm working on. Uh, I bet the game is classic. 
Uh, yeah, uh, Krohish, uh, Krohish, I'm sorry, I have to not say that right. Uh, you should definitely play the game. If you have a PS4, <clears throat> the game is like 20 bucks now or something. It's like super cheap. Um, you can either buy it or download it. And PS4 is going to drop in price really soon because PS5 is coming out this November. So if you haven't played it, dude, at least watch it. At least watch it on YouTube. But I would say definitely buy it. And, because you get to interact with Trico in a way that's like you interact with a dog, right? You can wipe away the blood of this animal in the game. You can actually, like, clean off the blood from its feathers. It's it's nuts. It's it's that level of, like, you know, your brain really kind of starts to interpret that as, like, you're petting an animal, you're taking care of it. It's pretty It's pretty insane. It's pretty awesome stuff. Um, <clears throat> they really don't understand how to like, make you empathize, right, and care for the animal. Um... Alright, let's see what else here. Hi everyone, hello, hello, with the wings. Salem, how do you say that? Salem Sinner? Salem Sinner? Um, like to scale my model to real real life dimension on the screen to use layers to modify detail. Is RL real life, is that what you mean? Real life dimensions? Our L dimension on the screen and use layers to modify the detail. Yeah, that's something I should do is I need to start using morph targets more because that's always good to like do layers or morph targets and, and modulate your, your details. That's that's a good idea. Um, it was a monster book. Oh, oh, the bestiary. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah the bestiary. I have to find that book because I haven't looked at it in a long time. Um, but I'll find it for you and I can, I can, I'll list the title and um, uh, where can I list it? I can put it up on my, on my Instagram. Yeah, I'll throw it up there. As a note for anybody who wants to, to reference that book, it's pretty cool. Um, it's not really monsters though; they're more like really strange drawings from from back in the day. I mean, strange meaning that they're not anatomically correct, so they'll draw animals with um, some of the things. I mean, some of them are kind of monsters; so they have like human faces. Um, others just have like really weird, kind of oddly drawn, non anatomically correct paws and legs, and it's just it's weird. It just comes off as like they kind of are like remembering what a lion looks like, but also adding a certain weird stylization to it. Things like that, you know. It's it's a it's an odd it's an odd collection of illustrations. Um, what was the game called? Sorry if I mentioned it. Oh, sorry. Yeah, it's the Last Guardian uh, is the name of the game. Um, I have the statue of the creature back here. Um, in Japan, it's I think the translation is something like uh, Toriko Giant Maneater. You know, giant eagle man eater or something like that. Uh, hang on one second, I can't do all this. Alrighty. Alright, so this is all something this is a prototype, the only one I've ever made. I really need to I really need to finish up the other ones because uh, they're meant to be gifts for Ueda san, uh, Takeshi Furukawa, who is the exceptional composer. And uh, Derek Espino, who's the awesome sound designer. Uh, but this is Toriko, first and only prototype. You can see a lot better pictures of this on my website if you wanna you wanna check it out. So uh, yeah, this is the base. I did all the uh, wiring, although I bought stuff that was pre-built. So like the flickering was already already had like a little chipset connected to it that does the flicker. It was like for a train set, you know, like they just sell all these little pieces out there. So, um, and then I figured out how to connect a uh, infrared remote so I can turn it on from a distance, which is cool. Um, there's the head. You can kind of see some detail. I'm sorry, the window's kind of small, I know. but um, So there's things I got to fix too. Like I'm going to fix that seam in the face. I'm going to put the seam underneath the mouth, which makes a lot more sense. So like in the crease of the mouth here. Uh, and then I'm also going to thicken up the walls a bit and probably either paint them then if they still are transparent like this so that you don't have the glow coming through the cheeks because it should just be the eyes. So things like that. And you can see the wings got insane detail too as far as what the, what the printer could do. I mean, we can all sculpt, you know, bananas detail, but to have a printer actually be able to replicate it is another story. And now with, this is the Form 2 actually too, which was crazy. The Form 3 is... Is bananas. You can get some insane detail on the Form 3. Um, the wings look even better on the Form 3 than they do off of the Form 2. Um, so yeah, anyway, that's Toriko.
It's a beautiful name, too. Tori means bird, basically, in Japanese. I'm, I'm sort of doing a loose translation, I guess, because I don't know Japanese very well. I was just reading about this, though, and talk with friends of mine who are fluent. And then uh, ko is often used for ch child, so it's like bird child, right? And then uh, apparently it also can mean prisoner of war, Toriko. So it's a beautiful portmanteau, so it has multiple meanings. Um, and it's very poetic. It's extremely meaningful to the uh, character and the scenario. So it's uh, it's cool. It's a really cool. Um, it's a great idea. All right, so let's see here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, I gotta shrink this down a little bit. So what do we got here? Two, four, six, eight, nine. All right. So we want to do a total of. Oh, what did I say here? What do we got here? Um, let's just double check. I uh, twelve or thirteen? It's kind of. I mean, I need to find that one that's um, straight on. I really do need to reference that. Did it save that in my textures? No, it didn't. Arrgh. Yeah, I should go get that image quick. Let me see if I have it on double check here so again just so you guys know this is what I'm ah, this is what I'm getting at I flip my screens around too so I'm all like confused what left and right is on my monitor setup um, let me see here could have sworn I had that file on here uh, but maybe I just saved on my other computer um, let me just open this up quick. Oh, there it is. Alright, weird. Where did I save this? Open. Alright, I'm just going to save this on desktop. Ah, uh, uh, let's see here. What can we do? What can we do? Or actually, what I should do is... Sorry, I'll show you guys what I'm going to do here. What I should do is this. Um, let's do what I did last time, but this is a lot faster because it's just one one element. Actually, I should do this with both because um, I have the all these little triangles that are uh, out, you know, in the outer ring here. And then I have these, these very ornate kind of carved in elements in here too. So we got... So we have some weird sort of difference in here. And then we have one... Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yeah, so twenty-four. All right. Um, I can do math. Uh, so we're gonna do one. And so that what I'm gonna do is turn this guy off. I'm gonna rotate this so that one of them is sort of straight up and down. I choose you, Pikachu. Um, I don't know why I'm being so random. Uh, <laughs> there we go. Whoa, stop being weird. Okay. So I'm going to use that one right here. And I want to... It's funny, when you transition to other programs, you want to start zooming in and out like ZBrush, or at least that's how my brain works. I have to, like, tell myself, no, I'm in something else. Stop it. All right. So I'm just doing a brush, just a regular hard brush, carving down. Oh wait, there's two. What is going on here? Why is there two lines? Oh, wait, is symmetry on? Do I have symmetry on? Is that what is doing this? Weird. What is going on? Hello. Yeah. Why are there two lines? And do hide. Okay. Yeah. One is symmetry, I guess. Right. Weird. All right, let's try this again. Okay, weird. Anyway, um, sorry, what's the chat saying? <laughs> yeah, real life. All right, neat. Wow, cool. Dude, this is really cool stuff, man. Given a lot of motivation to do in real life. Uh -huh. Cool. Very entertaining from your stream. Thank you. Sure. I hope. Hopefully it is. I hope it's entertaining. I'm sorry. Sometimes this kind of little nitty gritty work can look can be boring, but 
just think of how to transpose any technique I'm, I'm doing to like a project you want to work on. You know, so this would be great for anything ornate and detailed you want to do, but also have some sort of symmetry or um, systematic repetition in it. Um, and there's a lot of ways to do this. I'm just doing this with the alpha base kind of way, um, but you can do it in a whole bunch of different ways. Um, <laughs> you're too kind. The best artists I've seen on YouTube. Well, there's a lot of good ones on YouTube. I'll tell you what. Um, I think there's pretty stiff competition out there. Um, current title on Twitch is incorrect. You're watching Daniel Enrique de Leon. Yes. Again. Um, I guess this happened again. Kyle. <laughs> Moe's. What's up, Moe's? Um, yeah. I should text Kyle. I guess uh, apparently the title is wrong on El YouTube. Uh, let me just text my buddy Kyle. Kyle! Hey, bro. Uh, sounds like the title on YouTube is incorrect. Again? Thanks for the help. There we go. Let him know. Thanks for letting me know, guys. <laughs> okay, so I'm doing this thing. All right, so how is that operating? So it's still operating with symmetry. That is weird. But anyway, I'll just hold shift. There we go. And then shift straight out. And then shift straight down. And then I kind of want this to look a little bit more organic, so I'm kind of running this um, by hand now, not holding shift or anything. Because this is supposed to look like it was hand carved. Um, I mean, that's how they designed it, right? And what I'm going to do here is um, I'm going to Gaussian blur this thing so that it it doesn't have such a sharp uh, indentation. Uh, I should also check what my resolution is here, but that doesn't matter actually. If it degrades a little bit, that's actually okay. Uh, yeah. Oh wait, shit, did it on. <laughs> Oops. Uh, what I can do is just this, copy, paste. Because so I did it on the wrong layer. So I wasn't paying attention. So do this, and this, and then this. Okay. So let's check our image size, and it's opening it up on the other monitor. Uh, so one uh, seventy-two is fine. Um, okay. So what I want to do then is Control New, New Document. Got to make it a square. Sorry, it's on the other monitor. Alright, so let's make this 512 by 512 72 dpi. Actually, we could do, I think we could do 1080p, right? 1024 1024 create invert, paste and we're going to whoop, make it bigger. Uh, Alright, so that's our symbol. So I want to soften those edges a little bit. Uh, so simple Gaussian blur. Uh, da, 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 da. So that'll just kind of give it a little gentler insertion there when we uh, use that to kind of imprint into the shield. Uh, all right. And then do Control E to flatten that down and save this as whatever. Um, Shield symbol one. Uh, sure. Okay. Boop. Alrighty. Come on. What's going on? Oh, duh. Keep forgetting. It keeps opening up windows on the other, <laughs> on the other monitor. Okie dokie. And the other thing that we should do now that we're here is the triangles. They kind of look like arrowheads. Kind of trying to decide though, but it also looks like there's some like almost like an A or a V 
It's like a weird mix. This is like a hollow point, hollow element to it. Um, do new layer. And I'm gonna rotate this. Let's back out. Oh. See, can we do this quick? Oh wait, I'm hiding the stuff there, aren't I? There we go, derp. Okay, uh, I'm just gonna rotate this to, oh, wrong one, hello. I'm just gonna rotate this image like so. God damn it, Kyle. On Twitch, rather. Oh, on Twitch. Okay, oops. Title has been updated. Kyle is in the ether. <laughs> okay, cool. I guess you got it. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Kyle. All right, so I'm just trying to get this one. Triangles. My target. All right, it's good enough. All right. Mm, let's just zoom in, and we can turn off the other thing, all right, so this is kind of like so, I believe, but it's weird, they all look a little different, they all look, they all have slightly different But I guess that's how it feels, right? That's about, that's about what it's like. Damn it, I did it on the wrong layer again. <laughs> Anyone see Just Friends? Whenever I'm just like, damn it! And I think of either Just, uh, just Friends, the, sh the movie, or... Um, <laughs> I love that movie. There's so many quotes in that line, in that movie. There's so many quotable lines. I either think of Just Friends or um, 24. So 24, Jack Bauer's just like... Damn it! He's just screaming it all the time. Like that's his curse word because they can't drop any heavier curse words on network TV back then. Um, or still can, I guess. And then there's a uh, Just Friends. Um, is it, oh, what's his name? Is it? Oh, what's his name? The actor. Um, not. It's not Ryan Reynolds. It's the other guy. Um, I want to say. I want to say Kevin Klein, but that's not right. It's Kevin. What is his name? Dang it! Now I gotta IDB it quick because it's it's bothered me. Oh, uh, what is it? What's his name? Because he plays Dusty. <laughs> and uh, Dusty Dinkleman. And uh, <laughs> he's got some uh, some insecurity issues, maybe some, some slight mental issues in the, in the beginning of the movie. <laughs> so, Chris Klein. There we go. I knew it was something Klein. Chris Klein. So Chris Klein plays Dusty. And he's trying to play this song that he wrote for Amy Smart's character, Jamie. Jamie Palomino. And uh, <laughs> he's trying to play on the guitar while while uh, Ryan Reynolds' character is trying to profess his love for her via writing in her yearbook. And uh, as he's standing in front of them, and he's stomping on the ground, he's like, "Come on, Dusty!" He's like talking to himself in in the, in the third person. It's it's just hilarious. It's just uh, I guess he's not talking to himself in third person. He's talking to himself. Period. And it's just. It just reeks of like someone who's a little unhinged, maybe severely unhinged, and it's it's just hilarious. Anyway, sorry, that just came to mind because I'm like, come on, Daniel, come on, Dusty. <laughs> so you see where my brain goes? Just random connections here to uh, movies because I'm, I'm such a nerd. Oh my god! But the friends of mine who've seen Just Friends, we quote it to each other all the time now because there's a lot of. It's actually based on a true story. Like the guy who wrote it is actually based on his his life and uh of course it's embellished and exaggerated but uh if you watch if you have the dvd and you watch the behind the scenes and making of he talks about how it, how it's his real life and uh, how it happened and it's it's pretty cool and he winds up with a girl of course you know it's a happy ending which is cool but a very funny movie if you haven't seen just friends watch it because they would never make that movie today unfortunately and the way the climate is today it's so prohibitive to anything moderately edgy at least in certain directions. So, good times. All right.
right, so we're just going to fill this sucker with black. And again, it's putting my menus on the other monitor. Ah. Does anyone know how to, like, I switched sides with monitors. So do you know how in, in Windows you can, I mean, it, it, it knows what monitor 1 and monitor 2 is. But apparently, like, that's why I had to, like, delay my opening of my stream a little bit. It's like, ZBrush opened up off screen. So that I had to go and figure out how to, like, bring a window back to, you know, and it was such a pain in the ass. And so now it's like opening everything up on an imaginary side that doesn't exist anymore while the screens are here and here, right next to each other. It still thinks that the screen's over here. I'm like, the heck, is there any way to like reset that so it just knows everything's only on these two monitors now and not in the imaginary third, which isn't there? Because <clears throat> that's super annoying. I'd like to just have it know, open everything on these two only. Because now it's doing this where it's like, like I said, it's opening stuff on the other monitor. It's annoying okay so this is our arrow triangular thing symbol I'm gonna do another Gaussian blur I could have just hit filter actually but oops whatever so there we go and then we're gonna merge that down and save this as triangle do, do, do. And there we go. Alright, get out of Photoshop. No, I don't want to say that. Alright, bye bye. Okay, so now we got these symbols and we got that symbol. So, oh, what do we want? We want 24 of these, right? I think. Okay. And now, what we want to do is bring in the alpha. And we'll do this one first. And then we do a drag rectangle. And I guess that'll work with slash three, right? Let's see what this looks like. Uh, oh wait, duh, gotta do a, a focal shift to 100 negative so that it goes hard. Yeah, beautiful. Uh, and if I wanna turn off radial for a sec, let's see how this looks. All right, so it's a little off in that area. I want it to be more symmetrical, so we're going to undo. And try again. I think the best way is probably just go from horizontal. And I want to be more centered. Hmm. It's looking weird up here. Come on, Dusty! Hmm. Um, display settings, you should be able to set a certain monitor as your main display. I'm pretty sure your monitor you set as main display will open up any... Yeah, I mean, I have... My large monitor is, is number one, um, but it's still opening up other stuff, like as if it remembers where the previous monitor two was, which was on the other side of monitor one, instead of where it is now, which is on the opposite side. Um, third monitor still show up in window display settings. No, I'm saying it's like an imaginary third monitor because number two monitor was on the right side of monitor one, but I moved it to the left side of monitor one now. So, it's acting as if monitor two is where it used to be instead of where it is now. So it's like it's treating it like there's almost like a third monitor there, except it, it's not, you know. Um, to choose the extended desktop. Da, da, da. Disable my Cintiq in the display settings. It's an option in the drop down. Once you choose to extend desktops. Hold shift with radial lock and you drag it out. Uh, you can drag the monitors inside the display settings window. Huh. Actually, oh yeah, 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 I've done that. Yeah, that too, I've done that. That's how I moved it from left to right. Um, 
Did you shift the displays and display settings to match where they are? Yes, I did. <laughs> what Dougie said. Yeah, I moved them around, but it's still uh, throwing stuff up back where the other one used to be, which is a weird thing. It's almost like ZBrush has a memory of it in itself. Like ZBrush is opening up where it used to be instead of where it should, um, which is the bizarre part. All right, let's see this. Um, I should have left actually that other thing open because that was a had the uh, image dead center. Let's go back and check quick. Almost there. I think that's almost correct. It's like the top two here are like weird. I've noticed. Like it's like it's like a plus symbol but then here this looks like this should be like all the rest and then I guess there's little squares here and then there's this like hand drawn kind of carved area uh, let's see what did my uh, yeah, okay I think Kyle got to it yeah cool no problem thank you so all right <laughs> voted what do we want Mufasa or Cupid yeah let me know yeah please vote if you guys want me to work on Mufasa or Cupid and Psyche after this because I'm going to be doing a two hour thing here we're almost at hour two already actually Jeez. well minus like ten minutes I was I was uh, absent figuring out my ish um, okay so it's interesting here too it looks like there's like another indentation in between each of these and it's like it looks like there's a little circle in between there. Interesting. It's like a raised area. So I think I'll have to touch that up. And then this is embossed. And then there's that line. Interesting. Okay. Um, let's get back here. Okay. Let's see. So I might just smooth out that top one there manually after the fact. Uh, all right. I kind of want to do this. That's looking pretty good. Okay. Uh, let's look back here a second. It's like there's almost more space in between them, though. It's like an equal amount of space as that they occupy as that's what's between them. And that's almost there. So, yeah, yeah good enough. Close enough. Plus, we're not going to get that intensely. We're not going to be ever zoomed in this closely on the shield. It's going to be just a flash, and you're actually going to see more of the other side. Um... Well, maybe not flash, but you're not going to get this close. Maybe, maybe I don't know. Who knows? Maybe with all this work, I'll do a tight shot on the uh, on the shield where it starts. Um, all right. So what are we? I'm just doing a fade out here, quick. So we got the bottom ones there. The top two. It looks like it's faded out, but maybe I don't know. Maybe it's supposed to. I don't know. It's weird. This this area right here. Strange. Anyway. All right. So then we got lines. Uh, let's get back to radial. So we got lines here um, between those. So now I can zoom in because we got this oriented. That's pretty carved in there, actually. I should have. Well, I can smooth it out, whatever. I should have set a morph target. Vasquez, you were right. <laughs> I should have done like a layer. Oh well. Live and learn. Ah, what's going on here? Uh, oh yeah, derp. And let's make it a little larger. Uh, oh, too far. Quick save. Uh, 
set history state. Control click. Oh yeah, that's right with the history brush, right? I forgot about that now. Yeah, that's a great new feature that I haven't taken advantage of. And later you can erase and add circles and signs, whatever else easier. History brush, yeah. Shrug. <laughs> I'm in love with the history brush since TS Master Stream. TS, you mean uh, Whittlebach? He is a master. Um, that's right. So okay, let me, so walk me through that again, because I've have, I have really yet to. Um, Sorry, this is like, I keep dipping down below the camera. I'm like, bloop. <laughs> um, so we got the history recall, right? And then you, what, tap control, is that right? Uh, doop. Is that right? Tap control there. And then, what's the same? Requires a recall mesh stored undo history state. Control click on the desired undo history. Okay, I thought that's what I just did. Okay. All right, I got it. All right, so I'm hitting control and I'm tapping there. What? Come on. Okay, all right. I just did that. What the? Ah! I just control clicked on it. Oh, oh, symmetry. Derp, okay. Not radial, maybe. Okay, I got it. What about this? No, no symmetry at all. Okay. Boo. That's to be rectified. Come on, guys. Ah. So, how about now? Okay, there we go. Interesting. But not with symmetry, huh? Why? Why not with symmetry? Lame. Lame. I'm disappointed. This is my disappointed face. <laughs> it's all good. No worries. I won't hold it against you. Uh, I'm just going to go back to the old-fashioned way. Oh, got some weirdness going on here. Undo. Come on. Why is it not undoing now? What is going on? Undo? Hello? Do I, can I undo that now? Okay, so, whoa! Why is it, stop, no. Okay, jeez, God. Whew. Okay, derp, let's go. Okay. Good lord. And then it looks like there's a connecting element, like another... Or is that why I did those rings? Is that why I did it that way? Because I, I did these rings a while back. Am I just being an idiot here and I should have done... Let me double check this quick, sorry. Uh... I'm just going to do a quick transparency, quick and dirty. So I line up those rings, yeah, with, with here, like so. Okay, so this is meant to be more the hand-drawn one, I'm going to have to fix this a little bit, but then... Okay, so yeah, there's like a third ring in the center there, if you can see, that connects these parts together. Interesting. Okay. Alrighty, so I gotta fix that and join these guys. Because it kind of looks like that. Basically. Yeah. Or does it go through? It almost looks, yeah, it does touch like the center piece too. Alright, um... Yeah, I feel like that this this is looking too pinched. I need to do like an alpha or like a, like a standard um this thing. And then 
Oops. Yeah, it's more like it. Uh, a little softer, a little deeper. Ah, I'm getting that staggering. I gotta do this instead, I think, right? Nah, that's probably gotta smooth this out more. Not too thick. All right, sorry, just happened. Trying to find that happy medium here. Mm. Eh, good enough. Whatever. I mean. I don't like it that much, but oh, another trick I could do is the planar. If I wanted to match that depth, this is a cool trick too. You guys can do. Uh, let me see if I can widen that a little bit. Let's see how this works. Um, yeah, the intensity is fine. So he'll control. There's Alt, which is you know, control uh, Alt, and then click where you want, and then just drag. But it's not carving into it like I expected. Dick, man. Arr. I think it's catching maybe a higher level. Boo. Never mind. Okay. Back to plan A. There's planar after that, though. I think that'll help. It just needs that added depth. Uh, come on, let's do this right. So it's more like that. All right. Uh, da -da -da -da. So maybe we want to bring this up. So I'm going to bring some elements up and some elements down. I feel like I'm destroying that a little bit, but I think I can tighten it up here quick. Ah! Using planar is a great way to uh, bring things up, bring different polys up to the same level as wherever you're working. So it kind of creates a shelf, a nice clean shelf, or at least a workable shelf. Maybe not super clean, but and you can do a nice little smooth. Huh. Now something is. Th I think it's that it's. Yeah, it's like those all these points need to be pushed upward a little bit more into the other area. I wonder if planar will work for that or not. Uh, so a little smaller. Just go ah, too big. Um, yep. Okay, and 
mixture. Good enough, right? I mean, I'm getting, I'm getting so into the nitty gritty here. It's like I'm sure it's becoming irrelevant. Uh, all right, and then there's like a dot here. <clears throat> a little smaller, I think. about right it's so cool like it's so rewarding whenever you're working in this kind of stuff and you get detailed in areas and you just kind of get bogged down and you pull out and you're like wow this is coming together so it's cool to see the cum and that's with any sculpture not just like ornate um jewelry or you know ornamental pieces but even with characters you just you get tired for a while you're like doing all these little wrinkles and these crevices and these scales and you're just like oh this is killing me and then you pull back and you're like oh but it looks so good you know this is a micro scale of that but uh it's always fun it's always rewarding when that you have that feeling a certain feeling of accomplishment <laughs> thanks thanks Vasquez because this is why you use masks instead of brushes uh yeah you yeah, could <laughs> Five buttons off your keyboard asking why isn't it working undo damn it <laughs> we'll do it live exactly in all fairness we've all been there yep full-time condo there <laughs> yep exactly well I'll, I'll see them though and the people who, who know this extremely well will see them. Uh, OCD God Trip Adventures of Perfection. Yep. <laughs> so my summer home away from a program doesn't work condo. Funny. Yes, yes, yes. I know. There's other ways it might be a little bit more efficient. Um, quit busting my balls, man. All right. We're going to jump over to... What do we want? Who wants Mufasa? Who wants Cupid? Maybe we'll do a little bit of both if we don't really get any any voices of uh, extreme opinion or dissent. <clears throat> uh, let's see here. All right. All right. You win, Vasquez. You win. He can't be taught! Come on, don't start doing this now. This freaking... Ah, my Cintiq has this issue where it just keeps... Wow, okay. It's like holding control down now, right? It was. What the heck? I've got to... I've probably got to get a new Cintiq or something. I don't know. The buttons on this thing are going. Undo. Come on. No, no, it won't do. See, it won't let me key combine. Trying to do unmask and it wants to do mask. Mother. I hate you, old Cintiq. <laughs> this is a new thing, too, and I didn't spill, wa spill water or any liquid on my Cintiq buttons. Plus, with this computer heat, it gets so hot it evaporates anything that's... Oh, duh. I've been doing this with symmetry on. Hello. Derp. Alright. I'll do that. Genius over here. Genius. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Actually, the faster way to do this, too, which I won't have to undo other things for. What the heck? 
Come on. Uh, sorry, I'm gonna have polygroups. So that's the green group. See, so if you guys want to know, just for those who may not have seen, a bunch of different polygroups. I just want the top one here to do the masking. To designate where I want it to dip down to kind of just match the others nicely. Because this got kind of blurred together when I created the alpha. Uh, I think that's. Oh, yeah. And there's other sections here, like so. Oh. Sure, we aren't doing anything else anywhere else, and then we go down. And I have to keep this centered. Oh, all right, so we do want it to grow a little bit. Uh, Oh, fun. Um, hmm. You can grow display. Probably shouldn't have had so many polygroups on the inside. <laughs> the Greek deity of love. Let's keep it. Keep it or scheme of Fossa, the crossover we all need. <laughs> That's pretty good. Uh, Alright, so we got one vote for Cupid now, because the Exodus is over there like, well, I haven't seen Cupid. Um, so I can jump on Cupid. And then I can do Mufasa on my own time. I know, guys, sorry, this is not that exciting. Uh, just doing nitty gritty work here. I'll finish this up here quickly and we can move on to more fun stuff. I'm just gonna fix these points. I'll save it then after I drop these guys down. Uh, for the person who's saying, Mantra, isn't this a bit high value for this asset at this stage? Not really, because this is kind of like where it's going to, this is like the end factor. This is like sort of, this is not going to be more detailed than what it is in a sense. Um, you'll see if, if you're not sure what this is. This is the shield from Last Guardian. Um, I'm not going to go into too much more sculptural detail beyond this. So I'm going to smooth some areas out so these sharp areas will have a more um, natural fall off. More gentle, smooth kind of connection to the uh, underlying surface. Uh, and there's other details we put it in, but it'll be to this degree, not any further. So I'm not going to be going to any further micro detail than this. Um, 
So I don't think it's really going too far at this point. It's just probably not that exciting to watch, unfortunately. Um, so that's what I'm going to stop here in a sec. Uh, but but this is just the the uh, correct amount of detail that I want to be adding. Could go more insane, um, you know. But it's funny. I showed the. Uh, I showed the detail work of my Toriko statue to the sound designer and a buddy of mine, Derek Espino, who is the sound designer on The Last of Us, The Last Guardian, and a whole bunch of other awesome projects. And uh, he was like, dude, you'd do well in Japan. <laughs> He's like, you would do well. That's uh, that's the kind of obsessive detail they like to see. It's like, you would do well. I was like, thanks, man. Appreciate it. So, uh, ha! <laughs> Um, no, I know. This is not that fun to watch, though. Despite it being potentially a lucrative amount of attention to detail in a foreign land, I get that uh, this is not that exciting to watch, regardless. I hear you loud and clear, internet peoples, peoples of the internet. Your pain shall be uh, released shortly. Alleviated. That's the word I was looking for. Almost done. And then it's Cupid time, I guess. So what do we want? Cupid, Mufasa. I need. I need a, a tiebreaker here. At least two more votes. <laughs> We got one for Cupid. Everyone else seems to be indifferent, right? What else do we got? Who else wants to see what? Um, dude, like no one is complaining. <laughs> Good. Glad no one's complaining. This is this is how the uh, this is how the work goes sometimes, guys. Thank you for the note. You're correct. No one is complaining yet. It's for anyone wondering, I'm masking areas that I'm going to drop down in case you're like, what is he doing? Show everything. Invert mask. And then we pull this sucker back. Actually, the other smart thing to do is I want to kind of compress that. I don't want to just push everything down. So another good way to do that is to make sure we can do this. We can hide everything else below. Or oops, other way around. Hide everything below. Bloop. And uh, you can look at this from the other side. You turn on double. And then hold alt. You can bring this guy down. So let me see here if I can do it like this. So I'm going to bring this down. So if I just alt click like here, yeah. there we go. So now it's touching this blue polygroup. So now it's flush with that. So if I were to hide this guy, and then we go back to the gizmo, you can see it's right down there, right on the, the blue plane. So that's why I want to compress everything too, so it's matched to that, right? So now with the unmasked areas there, we drag with the green downward and so we're compressing all those polys except the purple ones <laughs> no did I miss that I missed that area didn't I that's what happened okay <laughs> come on dusty oh dang it all right oh. 
staring me right in the face and I wasn't even thinking about it. Is that everything now? Did I get it all? Oh, I didn't get these guys either. Derp. Genius. remember in the matrix in the third one <laughs> ah missed this guy too smith is like is it over <sighs> he thinks it's all done is it over <sighs> exhausted man how did i miss I got all this. What the heck? Oh, duh. My god. Symmetry again. Okay. Keep forgetting I turned on and off symmetry. God damn it. Part of my French. In the words of uh, Chris Farley Son of a. Was that Tommy Boy, right? You guys remember Tommy Boy? I love David Spade. It's great. Emperor's New Groove, phenomenal because of David Spade and John Goodman. So good. Is it over? <sighs> so laborious. So much work. Okay. Um, I'm just being ridiculous. Okay. Here we go. Otra vez. Once more. Still got that gizmo in the right spot, huh? Okay. And now, compress. Uh, I said compress. There we go. It's looking kind of fugly, but that's okay. Can smooth it out. Just want to at least get some indentation close to what was there. I mean, close to all the other levels, so that it is correct. Ugh, that area is looking kind of ugly. Ugh. It's like nasty. Fix that up quick. Okay, so that's fixing up our indentations. Some smooth in here. Oh, come on. Some planar cleanup. You can check out this other side here. Yeesh. Yeah, that's expected though. Some of these things will go too deep, some of them will come too little. Will go far too little. And this is this is just this is my level of just insanity detail, yeah I know. It's like other people were like, what? Why? Cool thing is you can use planar in the background here too. You can go behind something and do this. Well, is that going to work? Uh, well, I'm just doing some of it there, but it's not like in this one here for some reason. It's too far, maybe? I don't know. Let's 
do planar here quick just to uh, try to dig out this section a little bit so it's not quite so ugly. But again, it's like, yeah, who's going to see this? I will be smoothing some of this out anyway, so we can start letting some of this go. Yeesh, some of this just did not look, did not turn out well at all. common name in Brazil. Huh, really? <laughs> oh, Vasquez, you're coming in with the jokes. Extracting bullions instead of masks. <laughs> Could do bullions too, yeah. I feel like adding cylinders and all that would take as much time, maybe more time, but it would look better, you're right. It would look better. Anyway, I'm going to stop with all this pain and move on to the other guys for now. Because, yeah, this is all just tedious work. And I'm going to be muddying this up anyway. No, oh, that's too high. All right. alternating between smooth and planar. arrested for assault against the landscapers. <laughs> yeah, I'm just using my keyboard now because uh, because the keys on my Cintiq are going, I think. I just don't know what else to do with them. Looking kind of ugly, but oh well. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna let this go from here. Uh, you know, you're right, Vasquez. Booleans would probably still be better here because this is gonna take more time than it's worth. Could just create some cookie cutters essentially to fix those areas but whatever this is a holding pattern this will be where it, it resides for now some success and then tiny modicum of success but it's fixable we're almost there 
Really, the side's almost completely done. It's just these little things. And uh, the handle. The handle should be pretty simple. And then just all those little cuts around the center so it matches that. So it matches this thing. Anyway, all right, closing this stuff down. Um, Bye-bye. OK. All right, let's save this as work in progress. Uh, where did I have it before? Um, did I have it in there? No, I had it in projects, I think. Where did I freaking save this last time? No. All right, whatever. Desktop it is for now. Okay. So, are you guys hearing landscapers now? Is that why you're mentioning me throwing it through the uh, shot, putting it hundred yards uh, through the window? Uh, so what are we doing here? You guys want to see... We have one vote for Cupid. This is the old Cupid, sorry. This is the original. And this is the new one. Except this is the old new one. I think I gotta load in the uh, newer one, because this doesn't have the clouds. I was playing with for Mufasa's one, so... Delete all that. Load in... Cupid. I hate how it always changes your view in Windows. It's so annoying. Like, I like details. I like having date modified as my main filter. And it always gives me icons and other things when I don't want it. It's so weird. <sighs> yes, human legs. Cupid has it. All right. Cool. So these were brought in from the Mufasa sculpture, which is uh, this one. Right? Um, but we want to see Cupid, so we're with Cupid. So yeah, I'm not really happy with all this yet. I'm just kind of throw it in there just to figure things out. I think this is way too big and too dominating of the uh, of the whole piece. Um, just to give you guys a little tour for those who haven't seen it it's all a work in progress I know anatomy is not perfect yet there's a lot of things that are going to be touched up and fixed he's going to get underwear um, like he had in the original like in this one kind of going for a 300 sort of look you know just like some some nice angelic boxer briefs with a little belt and his uh his uh, quiver of arrows and his badass uh, bow. So all that's going to be brought in here later. Um, but this is sort of the continuation. So this is them. They're sent from Hades, from Hell, essentially. So uh, kind of superhero esque, you know. Um, and there are so many new cool tools coming out. I can't say anything about it. All I can say is I'm. I'm lucky to be privy. I was invited to be a part of the next beta for uh, for the next version of ZBrush, and there's some stuff that'll make this whole thing a lot easier, or in some areas easier, and, and just more intriguing, for sure. So you guys are gonna be, I think a lot of you are gonna be pretty pretty impressed with what's coming out next. Pretty awesome stuff. Um, so yeah, I think I'm gonna shrink all these clouds down and manipulate them a bit. I love doing the lattice tool with a bend curve. This is always fun.
Yeah, it's looking a little too squished. And let's go the other direction, which is... No. How do you do that? Is it this one? Ah, shit. Undo. Undo. Undo! There we go. Okay. Um, so then we gotta say accept. And then go back to do the other axis. Uh, there we go. So I want to do a little squishy squashy. This is really kind of just experimenting right now. I'm not sure. In my head I saw like billowing clouds, but I've got to figure out... The trouble is this is going to be printed, so I've got to figure out how to have it look like they connect with the wings a bit so it's enough support to hold up his structure, even though I'll make him very hollow and light. Uh, I still want it to look both believable and yet not be so impossible and so frail that it's going to just, you know, break and fall down. Because we only got really three big points of support. Excuse me, it'll be the wings and their arms. And I'll probably make their, their arm and her, you know, this whole middle section just solid. Just a chunk of resin. Um, and then his body, of course, and the, the wings, of course, will be solid for as thin as they are. And I'm probably even going to make them a little thinner and more detailed still. Um, but he'll be completely as hollow as possible and as thin as possible. The wall thickness, everything here will be much more thick. Um, her whole section here will be solid, and then as it radiates out, it'll probably get um, more hollow. Um, so yeah, just trying to figure out, figure out what to do with this. It's like, hmm. I think I just need to create some more voluminous kind of billowing clouds and just mess with it a little bit. So going to inflate and we'll do some scattering. How about looking in the chat? Um, everyone's going keep it. I hate when downloads folder on my windows always attempts to index the content. Or letting you do anything. Yeah, right? What is that? What is up with that? The downloads folder. It's like categorizing everything by dates now, but like weird chunks of date. It's not all just like oldest to newest. It's this weird I don't get it. I want it I want it to go back to the way it was, like every other finder window. And it's some class to legs. I feel it would be more stable if the contraposto is closer to the center. But I don't know. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah, you, I guess it could kind of... I just want to avoid it looking... I don't want it to look too much like a fart. <laughs> like a glorious fart that just, you know... I don't want it to... Look like Cupid's just farting on her. <laughs> but yeah, legs. I mean, I guess I could try to figure out... I don't know. Let's just move stuff around see what it looks like. So, of course, just really rough. But just messing with things. What is this going to look like? If it were billowing down almost like his legs were rocket fuel <laughs> need to go to strong smooth strong here uh, where are we going brushes smooth hold shift smooth stronger donkashe Oh man, I've been looking at uh, environments and, and assets and Quixel's, uh, Quixel's Mega Scan. My God, some of the stuff they have is so awesome. I can't wait to implement it in uh, an Unreal for my short. It's going to look so good. I think we're going to see some really incredible stuff being made by one one or two people in, in the near future. Just all in Unreal and ZBrush Maya and you know, a combination of all these other tools. But Unreal is just giving us the power to render stuff that looks so great so quickly now, that was one of the biggest bottlenecks i think for many years a lot of us could model you know have the ability to model stuff well and efficiently and have it look great as a still or turntable you know but in, to be animated and moving around it in real time and have it look like it was rendered in v-ray that's a whole other story because you, you would need a 
an insane machine or a lot of time or both and or a render farm you know and now if you have a nice 2080 ti and a decent computer with a nice you know amount of ram and cpu you can do just jaw-dropping stuff on one machine it's just nuts you need to know how to tweak things right get the lighting right make sure you got your frame rate correct because so many people do the wrong frame rate it's such a simple it's such a simple thing and yet so many people don't do 24 frames or 23.9 frames a second and that's what makes something look cinematic versus look like a soap opera or just that really too smooth doesn't just doesn't look cinematic right it's just that frame rate alone is what our brains have been attuned to for all of our lives really in, in cinema and uh, so many people do not know that apparently or do not do that and so party favor anyone trying to make a short film make sure your end result that you film in 24 frames a second you know it just makes everything look immediately it looks more cinematic the way it blurs the way it um the amount of frames per second um you know there's other factors too of course but uh that's one of the big ones it's frame rate of course lighting and editing is huge too but uh seems like sometimes they can get all that down but just the frame rate really kind of cheapens it it's amazing just how smooth frame rate can really lower quality of something that's uh could otherwise look look and feel a lot better Do some little experimentation with this guy. So this is a Sculptress Pro for those who have not used this much. Uh, thanks to the encouragement of others, such as Vasquez, <laughs> I started experimenting with this more because I knew I was I knew it was there, but I just wasn't just wasn't really taking advantage of it, and I should. And uh, so thanks for the encouragement, dude. Um, so as you can see, it's 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 called tessimation. Is what it's doing. So it's dynamic tessellation. So it's adding new geometry, growing it as you in real time as you add. You know, so I can infinitely inflate here. Essentially, normally if you would inflate a regular, just do it with a regular type of inflate brush. So like here, you're just inflating that, and it starts to break down. You can see that after a while, here, it starts to like expose all the polygons, right? But if I did that same thing with you can see all the edge loops here very clearly. I did the same thing, but with Sculptures Pro on. I mean, you're you're killing your quads, but you can always Z remesh or whatever. But if if this is just if something for three D print and you really don't need to worry about topology other than just having enough of it right to define your form, this is this is a dream for that. It's it's pretty cool. So it's it's not always applicable for everything. I think there's a lot of things that are um oh man this freaking thing. There are a lot of things that uh, it won't work for, but in this case, you know, basically doing what it would be like to redynamesh re and just kind of, you know, like constantly be swiping like this in the in the document and letting it process. This is an immediate um, concepting tool. It lets you immediately see and produce what you are thinking of in general, and uh, it's pretty awesome. Pretty cool stuff. So yeah, I'm just trying to think of how I think this is. I'm already liking the flow of this a little bit better. Um, Cause yeah, I'm trying to think of a way to like. I need to figure out a way to maybe have two streams of them. Some from the wings, some from the feet. I mean, the feet does make sense because you're pushing off with. He would be pushing off with the feet and the wings. So the wings would be kicking up like secondary dust. But I guess if your feet were in the dust and you're jumping up, you would have a trail of dust from the feet. So yeah, I guess that works. Just gotta make sure it's just with the feet though, and not. Not going from between and out from his butt, of course. Of course, I could make a parody sculpture of that and just be like, it's Cupid's fart, his ascension out of hell with a fart. <laughs> I'm 12, I'm sorry. Um, what do they call that, blue humor? I don't know. Um, what else we got? Glorious fart? Yes, I did suggest that, Dougie. I'm 12. The more I use ZBrush, the more I realize I don't know ZBrush. <laughs> There's a lot to know, dude. As you can see, I mean, I don't know it all either. I mean... And there's always other masters and other people who know different tools better than you. It's, it's, there's always someone better. You can change the order of Windows Explorer in the View tab, group by, and change it to none. Really? 
That is a good suggestion if that will work. Let me see here. So I'm in downloads and you said order in window explorer in view tab. Yes, view. Uh-huh. Group by. Yes. It says date modified. Okay. So then I say none. <gasps> You're right. It brought it back to normal. Thank you. Dude. How do you know all this? That's like a line from the Matrix for those who've memorized it. In the very beginning, Neo's like, how do you know all this, Morpheus? How do you know all this? We don't have time. To your left is a window. Go to it. I have that movie memorized. I could, I can quote the entirety of the Matrix and Jurassic Park verbatim. Probably even sound effects. I could add in all that background stuff. I could orate the entire movie. I've seen it too many times. That's 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 illness. I think that's obsession here. <laughs> that's a sign of deep obsession. If the poster behind me isn't an indication. Uh, thanks, dude. Appreciate it. it really, Vasquez, you coming to the rescue yet again. Vasquez gets the gold medal for solutions. Um, let's see. Windows 10 has brain ha <laughs> brain hemorrhaging. You can set things to get them to work. Uh, that's hilarious. Yep. <laughs> And then when Windows does an update, yep, it borks everything. It's so true. It's so true when it updates. It's like, hey, we've made this new convenient thing that's going to make your life a living hell just for fun. Here you go. Update. And now you're lost. You want to know how to fix something that was in perfect order before. I almost don't want to update Windows anymore at this point. I just want it to stop. I'd be like, stop updating. It's working fine for me. Just to stop. And I, I mean, I, I put it on pause for like a month or whatever it lets you do, like 365 days. But eventually it's going to be like, you have to update. You have to update. And it's like, push it. And it's like, God, can't you just, can't you just make an operating system that works, please? <laughs> Vasquez, I have no life. <laughs> well, apparently you're spending it in acquiring good knowledge, though. Useful knowledge. <laughs> Can I have your liver? <laughs> what? <laughs> uh... Yeah, sure, but I'm an alcoholic, so it barely works out. Jeez. Cheers! No, I hardly drink. I drink with friends out for dinner. If a friend wants to come over and celebrate, might have a little glass of wine or a nice, nice old-fashioned. But that's about it. I'm not a big drinker either. This is not healthy for you, you know? So Vasquez, cut it out. Don't drink too much. It's not healthy. That looks like a butt. It's not look like a butt. Or anything else. I know where your brains are going, you dirty people. <laughs> Need to look like clouds, billowing clouds, not body parts. Do you guys play the game Inside? Anyone play Inside? It's a great game. By the guys who made Limbo. It's not for everybody. You know, there's a couple people I can think off the top of my head who would just hate it, but I know for a fact some of them hate it. But uh, I loved it. I thought it was great. Um, short, but I was just thinking of like weird amorphous body parts. And for those of you who played it, eventually you know there's a certain part in the game where you're like, what am I looking at? And it's like... <laughs> it's kind of horrific and sad. Such a weird, such a weird ending, but um, I would love to hear a little bit more of what if there's a metaphor behind it, if it's really trying to say, like, it's trying to say something else, or if it's just trying to be just body horror and just gross and weird and, like, you know, a weird The Thing kind of plugged in ending to a very otherwise um, beautiful and dark, almost um, almost like 1940s Germany. There's elements of the Holocaust in there. It's it's There's some pretty heavy stuff in there. I mean, it's really, it's really beautiful and really sad and... Uh, unique it's a really it's a powerful game it's just it's just got some really bizarre elements to it at the end where you're just like wow is it about is it multiple things you know does it do they intentionally have multiple things or are they just you know, some people like they say they create art but they don't really even know what they're making they're just sort of slapping shit together and it's just like it's art <laughs> it's like dude stop smelling your own farts come on like shut up you're so pretentious i hate that Either you have intention and you know what you're designing and it's it's meant to elicit a specific emotion, or you're just some pretentious dick who's just like, oh, let's just slap stuff together. It's 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 meant for your interpretation. <laughs> like, oh come on. Get off it. 
I mean, there's some people who do that and they do it well because you can you see where it's being guided. But I don't know. So many times when I see abstract art, it just irritates me because I'm like, dude, a monkey could do that. A chimpanzee could throw some paint at the wall and it's art, you know, or like a blue line. All blue below, all white above art. I walked into MoMA and I saw that and it was like, whatever, $500,000, a million dollars, something insane, some value, you know, it's just like nuts. And it's being featured and it's like, dude, it's a blue block of paint and a white canvas. Like, what? It's it's just, it just feels like a power play. It seems like this person has the right friends with the right amount of power and influence in this museum to push this thing out and tell everybody, look, it's art. Like, dude, my kid could do that if I had a kid. My dog could do that. <laughs> uh, just, I hate, I really don't like abstract art that's pretentious. It's Sometimes abstract art's really beautiful and happy and colorful and nice. That's cool. you know. But when people are just trying to be like, oh, this is my interpretation of, I don't know what, you know, I don't know, some, some lofty idea that doesn't make any sense and you can't correlate it to what you're looking at. It's like, dude, come off it. Please shut up. I like art with intention and defined purpose and skill requiring skill and thought and all that goodness. Anyway. I haven't seen it. It's kind of odd and for the sake of odd, I don't know. It's kind of weird. <laughs> Exodus. Ex oh, you're asking if it's Lucas. Yeah, yeah. He's one of the people I can think of right now for sure. Um, <laughs> yeah, Katamari ball of body parts. Yeah, you named it, Vasquez. Pretty much, that's what happens in the end. It's bizarre and it's gross, but it's kind of funny and it's it's, it's like a whole jumble of emotions you feel when you're playing it for sure. It's such a bizarre. It's I would consider it an art game, is what it is. You know, just as as other games like the Last of the Last Guardian is is an artistic game, but very clear story. Of course, I would say that the in, inside is definitely an artistic game for sure. And um, I would say it's a very fun game, but it's 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 fun for those who like to be contemplative in some way, as it's making us talk about it, and making us think about it. Like, what are the messages here? Are there messages? I mean, but at least it's not so abstract, you know, where you're just like, I don't even understand what's going on. It, it all makes some some sense, you know, as far as the context. You enter a lab and you start seeing all the stuff that's going on there, and it's it really does feel almost like Nazi experimentation, kind of, or something like that. It's very interesting. It's very interesting. Um, I would just love to pick the guys' brains, the guys that played at the company that made it. Um, Limbo is a little bit more clear in that you're a brother searching for his sister, but they don't tell you that in the game. You have to read about the description of the game. And it's uh, it's cool. If you beat it, it has a good ending. It's, it's very meaningful and touching and kind of sad, too, but it's a good ending. Um, I don't know. It's like I would, equi I would equate the... Uh, uh, the games like that Playdead makes, at least those two, because there's only two, they're similar to like Don Bluth films. Not nearly as family friendly, of course, as Don Bluth films, but they still are. They're dark, they're contemplative, they're, there's an edge to them, they don't pull punches. You can expect to be moved or at least to think. Of course, Don Bluth, it's more like you're going to cry, and it's more like all the darkest scenes of Lion King kind of throughout. <laughs> you know, if you've seen. Uh, uh, American Tale, same thing. It's just beautiful, dark. About often, it's it's primarily obviously about a Jewish family of mice immigrating to the states, and all the dangers therein. Um, pretty heavy stuff. Pretty powerful stuff. I still I remember when I was last time I watched it, especially that ending scene when Fivel finds his father. It's like man, it's so they really know how to push all the buttons. They make you cry with just the beauty and the music surging and crescendoing at the right time, and just the lighting and the the water, and it's just, you know, Papa! Fireball! And it's like, oh my god, it's just like, <laughs> if you have a heart, and you have family you love, it's just like, oh my god, I empathize so much! <laughs> so good. Just don't see stuff like that anymore, and it's frustrating. It's like, god, that's the kind of artwork we need! We need more films like that, that are high quality, that talk about the importance of family, and like, loving each other, and sacrificing for each other not anger all the time not just hating each other or just superficial mindless candy I like purpose I like meaning I like significance in my entertainment not always 
I definitely enjoy some stupid, dumb fun, too. Or just some ridiculous, ultra-violent, but not too graphic. I mean, it's sort of graphic, but like Doom Eternal. Doom Eternal's freaking awesome. It's just a testosterone trip. It's freaking great. Um, but it's still, it's different, you know? And even then, it still has like a loftyish kind of attitude. You're almost like this... You're almost like a, like an angel, kind of sent to sent to Earth to like just decimate <laughs> all the uh, hellacious creatures, all the demons. It's so awesome! I'm eventually gonna I, I downloaded it again on my PC just to to run it on here and really see what max settings look like since I have the power to do it now because I played it on my PS4 and beat it. Weird thing happened though. Bethesda let me create an account with an email address that had a... I was so tired, and I was putting it into my email to create a new account with Bethesda because they required you to. So annoying. And I accidentally hit an L after my, my email, .com, and there was an L right after that. And it accepted that, but then I can't properly register or unregister my account because I can't log in because it's like, we do not accept that email. It's not an accurate email. I can't log in on my PC. But I'm like, why did you accept that on my PS4 then? What the hell, man? So, a little weird. I don't know, a little annoyed with that, but whatever. I'm just starting over on my uh, PC, so I've got to start streaming that. I've got to carve out some time to just do that, but I just have so many other things going on right now. It's like I have other responsibilities that are extremely more important, exponentially more important than playing a game and streaming it, which is why I really haven't done it yet, even though I keep saying I'm going to. It's also because whenever I do play a game, even for a little bit, I'm feeling guilty, I'm frustrated, because I'm like, I just want to release. I just want some fun for a little bit. And then... I have to get back to all, you know, other projects. Um, which is kind of a good problem to have, but not, you know, having guilt all the time, as many artists do when you're doing anything else other than art or projects that you're working on or want to finish. It's not healthy to have that kind of guilt, but it's also not wise to just toss caution to the wind and be like, oh, I'm just going to have fun for two hours, and then it turns into six hours, and you're like, oh, shit, it's 10 p.m., what happened? You know, um, I don't know, that balance is just, it's hard to find. It's, uh, I don't know, it's a struggle. But it's like, I, I don't know, I think about it like this, like my friend was telling me, you should stream more, you should stream more, you should do more games, you should, you're gonna, you're, you're gonna play a game anyway, you might as well stream it and maybe monetize it, you know, like make a little money, get some super chats, or put out a digital tip jar, you know, like my PayPal, which I should do for this thing. Um, and, uh, and I'm like, yeah, you're right, I mean, if I'm gonna play a game anyway, might as well stream it and maybe make a little cash on the side, like, why not? Um... I don't know, but I just, I just really, I guess because also, I don't, you know, didn't have a really camera hooked up to my PS4, and PS4 is in the living room, I have my PC in my room, and it's like, and then I have a whole other office that's just for 3D printing, so it's like, everything's kind of like disconnected, you know, and this is great for streaming, but I'm not going to connect this to my PC, my PS4, and I don't know, I don't know, I got to figure things out, but I can stream now on this, so I should just start playing Doom on here, I guess, and I don't know. Man Eater looks like a lot of fun. I actually was dumb enough to download it on my PS4, but now I'm like, if I want to stream it, I should be doing it here, so I'll probably buy the freaking game twice. But everyone said it's a lot of fun, and it looks hilarious. And I love the ocean. It's the first game you really get to, like... Maybe not the first game. I know there's other games you play as a shark, but it seems like it's the first one that's actually successful. And people say it's fun. You just play as, like, a shark that's... <laughs> freak of nature. Mutates, evolves, and you just go around eating people. Sounds like fun. <laughs> it's like Goat Simulator with a shark, sort of. A bit more serious than that, I guess, or a bit better. I heard the soundtrack is good, too. I just saw the opening scene to it, and it looks good. It looks like it's fun. Ridiculous, stupid fun. Like Doom, kind of. <laughs> not as high quality as Doom, but, you know, anyway. Sorry, chat's going off. I'm not even... I'm not even paying attention. Sorry. Uh, let me just catch up quickly... Um, sorry, wow, going back here. Okay, um, modern art in a nutshell. So what is that? That name is blue, I can barely, what is it? Um, Mot, Mots, is that Mots? Maz T? Excuse me, ah, uh, Maz T. Hey man, I started learning ZBrush this week. What, uh, <laughs> do you have some tips? Uh, to a ZBrush beginner, uh, that's such a general question, dude. I don't want to. I don't want to make fun of it because it's 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 a legit question, of course. But it's like, where to start? Um, what do you know? What do you not know? What do you want to know? I mean, tips for it. I mean, uh, I think it's 
first and foremost, it's to become familiar with all your brushes. That would be the primary thing I'd tell you to start with. So if you're new to ZBrush, let's do a quick save here. Always save, first and foremost. Save frequently. Use your quick save. Make sure you don't have your quick save allow more than like four, two or three or four save spots. If you want to go too far, you're just going to start filling it up with quick saves and it gets, you start just accumulating a lot. I like two, I think I like two usually main uh, quick save spots or four. I have four, I think five. What do I have here? I have two and then recovered items, which is like when it crashes. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, just try to make that light, but um, get familiar with your brushes. So if I were you, and I was like, where to start? Oh, here's a ball that I was working with before. Uh, delete this. I was showing people just how I did some of the hair for my uh, statues. Um, okay, just checking time, but we don't have anyone after me, so we're good. Uh, so here's a sphere. So if I were you, and you wanted just to get started with ZBrush, I would say... Uh, so you got to make sure this is a make poly um, mesh click that okay so you got your sphere here you got two different kinds of spheres you got this one and then you can get the uh, label hunt I prefer often it's a polysphere it's a polysphere and I say I prefer it because they're good for different reasons so I, I actually started with a polysphere for the shield you saw me working on earlier then I realized what was I thinking I needed perfect perfect uh, circular edge loops so I switched to this thing and then flattened it and did a whole bunch of manipulation to it um, so you know these are great for eyeballs if you want again perfect circles that are connected to each other and extruding from each other. Um, but if you want to do anything else that's just like sculpting and you just want to get started with, with something that's quadded nicely, you're, you have your poly sphere. So it's called that because it's started from, you know, a quadded polygon, uh, or I mean a set of polygons. Uh, I can't talk. So reconstruct subdivision and bam, you got a cube, right? And then when they subdivide it up, it, it goes from a cube you're just adding, you know, and you got your sphere. So it's a nice quadded mesh. Um, so, I mean, you could start with simply just pulling out from here, you know, learning how to accurately use symmetry and I would say like sculpt a face, you know, or, or try like a cat, whatever, you know, just a character. Maybe even just make something kind of kind of cute. I don't know. You know, just, just get familiar with your with your brushes and how they all work. And then if you're past that, and, um, you know, <laughs> and I'm sure someone's going to be like, I'm going to make something cute and look at this thing. It's like a freak. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> calm down, calm down. It's going to get cuter. Also, don't beat yourself up. Remember that you're always going to make stuff that looks kind of crappy at first. Um, you know, are you going to go through what, uh, a famous sculptor once said, go through the valley of the suck. <laughs> you will go through the valley of the suck. You will go through, all of us go through that, you know, where you're just going through, uh, some efforts and, and moments of time where you're working on something and you're like, dude, this just looks like garbage. And uh, yeah, it does look like garbage, but you know what? It's gonna get better and that's okay. Every, all of us start with something that looks kind of crappy and it gets better. Um, that's just, you know, practice. That's what you gotta do. So anyway, I don't know. I'm just making a weird, I always make a cat for some reason. I was just like, kitty. Um, looks like demon. <laughs> uh, bloop. So I'm just doing this super quick and dirty. I mean, you know, I don't know. I'm just showing you like move brush. You got your basic, you know, standard brush. Um, you know, whatever. You could, just, you know, experiment with your clay buildup. So I br dragged all my brushes out here. Maybe you start working on a custom UI eventually. Um, you know, but just get familiar with what your with what your brushes do. You know, and understanding how subdivisions work. And um, you know, I think just just Getting familiar with that first and foremost is, is important. How they react, you know, what what Alt does when you click Alt with your brush. You know, certain brushes react differently when you hit Alt versus just being the negative or the opposite of what they do. Some of them re react differently. Um, you know, so I would say that's where to start. You know, uh, and then experiment maybe with, you know, understanding clean topology is important for sure because if you want to work in production, you're going to have to produce stuff that has clean topology, and this is not perfect, obviously, for this. Um, getting familiar with Z Remesher will help. Um, you know, it's not going to give you perfect, you know, production ready topology either, but it can help it can get you closer. Um, learning your, uh, Z remesh or, uh, sorry, um, your Z modeler brush. So it's basically like a mode more than just a brush. Um, but it lets you, you know, edit topology. So let's say we just delete everything here. You want to hit space bar. You want to insert, boop, 
add an edge loop, right? Um, just editing topology, that's that's important, right? You want to create a uh, star. Let's see, you wanted to create eyes out of something here. You know, you would do this probably, it'd be better. Immediately you create a nice area there for uh, an eye socket, right? Um, and what can we do here? We can do like opposite with this, oh, other way around. Oh, oh, oh. We'll do inflate. There we go. Durr. Uh, that's not working either. Anyway, you know, I don't know. I'm just messing around here really quick. Um, so yeah, anyone new, I would say start with just learning learning those important factors, right? As I create this freak of a cat, everyone's like, oh my god, the nightmares! Um, I don't know. It's, <laughs> it looks it looks great. It's, it's beautiful. It's done. It's it's there. It is. It's a masterpiece. It's it's what I've always dreamed of. It's so beautiful. Oh my god. So pretty. Uh, I don't know. I'm having brain freeze here. You know, I don't know. But yeah, getting familiar with your brushes, that's crucial. Um, learning to use Dynamesh too. Of course, that's going to let you cheat a lot, I would say, right? Because it's like, once you do Dynamesh, it's sort of like freedom. But it's also, uh, you know, it just adds tons of topology. As you can see, you can keep your polygroups, but uh, it's super dense now, right? Like crazy dense. But that lets you just that lets you kind of just sculpt with abandon, right? You just you can just always Z remesh. I mean, excuse me, um, redynamesh. So you're always just going to have you know, like I was showing you before with uh, Sculptures Pro. If you were looking, uh, it's similar to this, um, except it's not on here. So you don't you do you know you're going to stretch your polygons eventually like this and get out further and further. It's going to break down. Like here, it's breaking down now because they're just getting out too far. But you know the way you add more topologies, you just boop, do that and bam. Super dense again. We've got more topology. You can keep going. Um, so the difference between now between doing that and let's say doing like um, uh, doing a Sculptures Pro would be that you're still keeping things kind of quadded. Not that that's big of a deal, uh, but you also can join things together. So you can boolean things together. So learning how to combine objects as well is crucial. Also learning Z spheres is like a huge fundamental in ZBrush. So if you wanted to create a character from nothing from the start, right? You probably want to start with symmetry. I'm going to start with your Z-Sphere. Oh, I had my box from before. Uh, and then you got Draw Mode on, and you just want to say, okay, here we go. Bloop. I'm going to make this the torso, and make this the neck, and then make this the body. And it's going to be a really fat kitty. That's just going to be sitting here like a tub of lard. Just like Garfield, just eating something. I don't know. So you just got you got your chubby kitty, and this is a really weird cat. I know. Stylized. It's stylized, man. Stylized. So it means it doesn't have to look great. It's stylized. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not knocking stylization. It's great. It takes a lot of hard work. Um, I don't know. So Z-Spheres here. This is another important feature, right? That's like crucial, fundamental. So if you're new, learn Z-Spheres. And, um, you know, just learning how to do this quickly, you can just see how fast you can create a character. Um, you know, this is just the basis for what your, your polygons will be, and then you can manipulate it from there. But this is a really fast way to, uh, to make a character and give it some, some proportions very quickly. All right. Um, so all I'm doing is switching between modes here, draw and move, primarily. So you see I'm going back and forth. And um, <laughs> just a, I'm doing this only like that because I already made the head, so there's no, it's not really going to be much of a head here. You probably don't even need that one. But so then after you've gotten this, you know, you can just come down here to uh, adaptive skin. You can do a preview. Bloop. That looks crazy with Dynamesh on. So we want to. Uh, no discard changes. So we want to come down here and turn Dynamesh to zero, density to one, uh, preview. And that gives you a little something, something like that. Uh, it's kind of ugly, you know. I mean, as far as topology goes, it's horrendous, but it's something. Uh, I can go to two. Preview again. All right, so it's whatever, you know. Say, make adaptive skin. Click that button. Creates a new sub tool up here. I come over to there. And we can turn off the perspective in the box. So now here's your new kitty body, right? And you want to add the head. So we go insert. Where's the kitty head we made? That's horrific. Uh, there it is. Ah! 
Uh, so we want to do rotate that. It's a freak of nature kitty. It's a demonic kitty. That's what we're going for. Super demon kitty. Uh, this is horrific. You know, this is this is a monster. This is the thing, kitty, straight from hell. Uh, so this is not meant to be a work of art. It's just showing you some basic things. I'm gonna crop that guy, chop that thing off by making a different polygroup. Oh, only did one side. Doesn't work with symmetry. How wonderful. Uh, other way to do this, simple. Just, uh, whoops, dynamished. Turn off dynamish, and let's just chop off those weird things that were, I don't know what, just an example. Uh, and delete hidden, close holes, smooth. And there, you know, we got the start of something. And then you can Z-Remesh that, and delete lower. And come over to Z remesh. So this is in geometry. This is all in your tool palette. It's where you start. Z remesh. Just let it do its thing quick. Bloop. And immediately, better topology. Not the perfect one at all, but way better for what you want to do for sculpting and even for animation at this point. You could easily you want lower poly probably for that to rig it, but you know. You get the idea. So I would say learning your brushes, learning um, uh, Z spheres, Dynamesh. And then also dabbling with um, Sculptures Pro, just getting familiar with all those major tools, how to append or insert different tools together so you have, you know, multiple sub-tools and you know how to interact. Also learning live boolean, that's a huge one, that's a whole other can of worms. Um, that's all super important, so sorry to blow a lot of time on that, guys, for those who are who know ZBrush and are like, why is he showing this? So we want to help someone who's starting out, um, basics, fundamentals, you know, best practices, things you should definitely know. Uh, so that's where I would say to start. <laughs> so anyway, sorry, long answer for a simple question. When does AI surpass, in, uh, surpass us in human design art? I don't know. I don't think it's happening just yet, but it's on its way. When humans lose hunger to advance and do better. Uh, there are worse some modern art that I considered acceptable, but the ones that always grab the headlines are because of shock value. Yep, crucifix merged in a mason jar of urine. Yep, that's famous. Yeah, um, okay. Yep, artistic license has been uh, revoked forever. Yeah, exactly. When you're just aiming to offend people, I don't consider that art. It's just offensive when you're aiming to do that. You know, of course, anyone who's offended chooses to be offended. You know, that's the other thing I'm a advocate of. Like, if you're offended, it's your choice to be offended. If someone's trying to make someone offended, obviously that's not nice, but you can just choose to ignore them, too. A troll in Central Park still haunts my dreams. I never saw a troll in Central Park, actually. Awesome channel, you rule. <laughs> Thanks. If you want to follow me, I'll give you my actual channel, which I eventually will start streaming on. Um, I'm streaming on behalf of Pixelogic as an artist that uses their incredible software. Uh, but Tori Yamaya, thank you. Uh, man, I rewatched American Tale again a couple of weeks ago, and I was like, wow, this is a movie about a <laughs> Jewish mice family avoiding... Yep, exactly. That's exactly what it is, yep. Uh, see ya. Oh, okay, they came and left. All right. Um... You need to see Demolition with Jake Gyllenhaal. If you're into deepness, <laughs> entertainment, best film I saw for at least two years. Demolition, huh? All right, I'll check it out. I like Jake Gyllenhaal. I, uh, I really like Source Code, actually, with him. And I think that's underrated. Source Code's pretty cool. I was actually moved by it uh, in certain aspects. I always thought, this is, this, is a pretty, this is a pretty good movie. I highly recommend Source Code if you haven't seen it. Um, someone else agrees with you. You know what I saw? It was good. Blood Machines on Shutter. It actually looked interesting. I saw the I saw the advertisements for it, and it definitely intrigues me. So I, I probably might check that out at some point. Um, da -da 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 -da. Mario Polysphere. That's funny. I think that's the hardest part for me. Got to spend two hours before it looks like anything good. That's for everybody, dude. Thanks for the tips, dude. Yeah, you're welcome, man. Uh, hope so that I can sculpt like you. You will. You can. It just takes hard work. Just takes work, man. It just takes per perseverance and observation. Spend the time, find a passion, you know, pursue it. People just get lazy. People get weak-minded. Gotta stay strong up here, and you gotta stay strong on your work. You gotta keep on it. I was really disciplined with myself when I started out. I mean, when I finally got serious about it, I was just like militant, hardcore, locked in. Uh, I spent like six months just like, you know, just nothing but ZBrush every day as much as I could. Hardest part, in my opinion, is making weapons, uh, plate armor, and ZBrush. Yeah, it's gonna get. I think it's gonna get even easier if you start using the Z Modeler Toolbrush, Z Modeler Brush, and 
the next version of Zebra that's coming out will help it even more uh, with that for sure. Um, maybe check out some hard surface tutorials in ZBrush. It's not good for clean topology, but you can have. Oh, it's going to be even better for clean topology now, man. I mean, if you use the, yeah, I mean, it's it's really getting even better. But um, Z Modeler Tool Brush is pretty great for clean topology. Um, what else we got? Maybe check out some hard surface tutorial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, rereading that. Uh, especially with complex shapes, pretty nice. Cool. Yeah. All right. Caught up on chat. Um. Anyway, sorry guys. Sorry for the oh, wait. Okay, so we're at 420 here. I'm probably just gonna go slightly further and then I'm gonna call it. I think because I got a Zoom call, I've got to be on uh, shortly. Let me see here. Sorry, two seconds. I was getting a link. Yes. All right, so they're saying I got it. They sent me this almost an hour ago. All right. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, all right. So yeah, I'm gonna get another 10, 15 minutes in here, and then I got a jet. Got a jet. Um. Anyway, so. Uh, just figuring some of this stuff out. <laughs> yeah, this is kind of going more in the direction. I mean, I kind of want to figure out how to how to get it pouring out from a central area. Holding Alt, pardon me, lets you kind of blow things up here and kind of pull up. So I'm doing right here to do that. You, it takes the normals and it pulls out from the normals, which is awesome. So if you hold Alt, God damn it, <clears throat> excuse me, the um, move brush is great. So like normally when you have the move brush, if you just tap and pull, it'll just go according to your camera essentially, right? But if you hold, like right now, if I pulled it left or right, it's going to do that. But if I hold Alt and tap and, and slide it left, it's going to pull toward me. If I go, I mean, sorry, right. If I tap left, it's going to push it away from me. Pretty cool, right? So that's always a fun way to use the uh, move brush. So whenever I want to just make quick adjustments and I know what the planes are and what they're facing, I uh, just use the Alt and move brush together. So yeah, kind of. It's almost like it's almost kind of like a rocket ship, right? It's like and you just want this like pouring down of dust, and then it kind of billows out and curly cues beautifully. Um, what have we got in chat? Good way to learn is also to ask ZBrush quick films. Yep, the Ask ZBrush videos are great. Pixlogic Joseph Trust does a lot of that. I think Paul's in there too. Uh, if you need quick tips on certain techniques, well, yep, exactly. Yep, Ask ZBrush is great. So Pixelogic's been definitely been improving with their uh, improving with their just um, education and kind of getting it out there for uh, for more people to see on YouTube. And I think that it would be it would behoove them to continue to do that, which they seem to be. Um, I think it's uh, it's always great to keep very user friendly videos getting out there and uh, just helping people grasp some of the oddities of ZRush because there's there's a lot of depth to it. I mean it's like every every version now when they add something new it's it's not an insignificant um, development typically. I think the one the one time where it seemed like maybe some of the weakest um, evolutions, at least weakest when it came to like productivity and using it in a pipeline or even just being um, creative outside of just rendering, you know, but that was that's what it was was um the last one where it just had like the um, what was it NPR non photorealistic rendering? It was cool. I mean, it was all right. I'll be honest. It was okay. I was I was part of that beta and I was struggling to really 
find much use for that time for that um, that feature. I, I just didn't really. I mean, it was intriguing. I should have really tried to render it more in it, I guess. But it was. I just I was at that time too working more in production or, and or working more for three D printing uh, different products, and so I just didn't really find a lot of um really a lot of um, opportunities to really capitalize on on using rendering like that in ZBrush. It's cool. It's definitely cool. Um, just I didn't have a lot of use for it at that time, and it was kind of pressure to do other things. But the new stuff they have now in this one, I can directly use in some of the projects I'm working on. And I got to say, guys, it's got to be awesome. Definitely going to put other software on high alert. So that's what I will say. Other people out there will be like, dude, got some competition. And it's great. It's just it's so cool to see it, to see them thinking outside the box in different ways, too. Um you guys really love. If you love ZBrush now, you're gonna like it even more. And it, I think it's also gonna be a gateway into other, other types of, um, other types of thinking. That's what I'll say. You look at, you'll start to look at your sculptures and old ones and new ones in different ways. And I love when that happens. Um, and it, it's it's tapping into, it's tapping into elements that I used in other software for a long time, um, here and there. And now it's it's in it's parts of it are in ZBrush now, so it's gonna be pretty cool. Can't say more. Um, but yes, yeah, pretty cool stuff. Take off, blast off. Here we go. <laughs> So as we're winding down here, this is going to be the last 15-ish minutes. Does anybody have any other questions at all I can help with or any curiosities? Time just flew by. At least for me it did. I don't know about you guys. Maybe you guys are like, shoot me now. Oh, my God. Yeah, NPR is good for illustration, totally. Yeah. Hiko Vander Charm, uh, which 3D printer do you use for your models? I'm creating a board game at the moment and created over 90 miniatures so far. I printed on a uh, P Poly. Moai, so far, ordered a Frozen Shuffle 4K now. I'm assuming that one of those or both of those are um, uh, DLP, right? Um, I use a Form 3, Form 2, Ultimaker, and MakerBot. So two FDMs and two SLAs. Um, though I will say I use my SLAs significantly more, uh, just because of the, the kind of fine work that I do is often it's shown better because of that and that, that type of quality and those their material ranges um uh, but i and both are actually a little bit out of commission i think the hot ends need to be cleaned out for um for both of them so that's something i think one of them i just need to order a new one like for my MakerBot and for the uh ultimate grab i think i just need to like blast it with a heat gun or i need to get one of those little blow torches and just you know like clean it out um <laughs> It was so cool you let it slip about the thing. Tell us again. Uh, I didn't let anything slip. Um, nothing slipped. Just expect cool things in the next version of ZBrush, as usual. Innovation. Um, duh, 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 duh. Yeah, it's in Lightbox. If you're repeating figures, it might be economical to cast them. Interested in other people use and which machines other people use, which detail level to get with them. Hard to find such info on YouTube. Um, interested in other people use and which machines, yeah. So yeah, form three is form two. Uh, I usually do the 0.5 micron detail. Um, so it's like right in the middle. I typically don't do 0.25 unless it's like I want to create like a clear eye. 
Um, damn it, I was hoping to trick something out of you. <laughs> I'm still trapped. Um, I'm sure, you know, whenever. I'm not sure when they're launching, but when they do, it's, I'm sure it won't be too long and it'll all be worth it. Be worth the wait, as usual. Um, I bought a Form 3.2, but it delivered a worse quality than the Moai. Really? On Form 3, everything was kind of over-cured. Couldn't make it work. Weird. Maybe a laser problem with the one you got? I don't know. I don't really have problems with mine so far. I've gotten great results from everything I, I use. Maybe it was a resin, too. If your resin's older, I don't know. You should talk to them. You should talk to the folks at Form Labs. They're great. Uh... I mean, I'm a little biased in that I, I love their work and I, I work with their machines all the time, but, you know, I'm not, like, getting money or anything for saying it. Um, I'm an ambassador for them because I love their, their machines and I'm just, you know, trying to push them to their limit all the time. Uh, so, there's that. Uh, but, yeah, I would say uh, you should give your Form 3 another go, man. Faux show. I'm liking this more now. I'm feeling like, yeah, you know, Vasquez, that was a good call. Good call, sir. I'm wondering if this wing, this wing just feels a little... It feels wonky. I feel like it should not quite be like that, but more like this. Something like uh, something like that. Maybe a little bit more. No, but they should be kind of more semi-symmetrical, right? Yeah, I think I think that looks a little bit better. I like how you can see the knee kind of pushing out from it too. I think it gives it a little bit more. A little bit more energy. Alrighty. Well, I'm getting to about time. It's gonna give another few minutes here. Um, okay, so should I always, I always forget to do this until it's usually too late. But social media stuff for anybody who'd like to follow along. I'm gonna try to be better at posting more. I need to be. But. I, uh, sorry. I, G. So if you want to follow me on Instagram, which is probably where I post the most. Um, right now with 3D printing, I printed like 4,000 miniatures and parts successfully, but you have only a 48 hour print time when you test the form of three. But you have only 48 hour print time. So I can't give it back. Oh, gotcha. I can't give it back. And that's too short. So I give it back. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, no, you shouldn't have. I would say you shouldn't have given it back. I, I think you just needed to give it some more some more time. Um, but hey, teach their own. All right. So IG, follow me. That correct? That's right. <laughs> Right, Dougie, shut up. <laughs> um, so, I didn't give you any deets. No details. Just saying, look forward to the next version. Um, Twitter. semicolon in there, whatever. Um, and uh, and tip jar. If anyone would like to throw a few bucks my way, that's always appreciated. If not, no problem. Um, 
But yeah, I think that's all my social media. Oh, yeah, of course, my website, too, uh, if you would like. If For those who have not seen my work, if you'd like to check it out, if I can spell. There you go. Uh, yeah. So, didn't get too far, but it's all good. I'm gonna keep working on this. We shall progress. I'm gonna crank this stuff out here a little bit faster, try to get some things done so we can accomplish the mission. I'm gonna get this thing going too. But it's still, it's cool, minus the, the headaches of uh, detail here that I know no one cares about. I gotta say, it's fun to see it coming together. It's This is cool to have that certain level of control with making something ornate, you know. Being able to add some of that detail, it's fun. It's good stuff. And there's our kitty. <laughs> kitty butt. <laughs> That's scary. Oh my god. What an abomination. Uh, yeah, the old guy. Anyway, I'm looking for I'm looking for Mufasa. There we go. So I'll probably tackle this guy next time then. And I don't know. Hopefully I'll finish up the shield here on my own uh, over this week. Uh, I might be working on it again on Tuesday. Tuesday is my next stream. So if you guys want to jump on and join me then. I believe it's this Tuesday or is it next Tuesday? Let me double check. Uh, what is the next calendar set up? Am I on the 14th? I am. Yeah, so 6 p.m. Tuesday. This coming Tuesday, the 14th. If you'd like to join me. Hopefully I'll have the shield uh, progressed more between now and then, so maybe it will be done. Or at least I'll show you where it's at. And uh, I'll be working on Mufasa, and then maybe going back to uh, Cupid and Psyche at the same time. So, Anyway, I gotta go. Uh, got a meeting, so take care. God bless. Have fun. Uh, have a good rest of your weekend. For those of you in the future, have a good Monday. And uh, yeah, it's been good times. Thanks a lot, guys. Take care.